Welcome to CNBC Africa special conversation and today we're going to be talking matters health, matters medical, matters medical tourism and how to get there. Now I was talking to my guests earlier on who I'm going to introduce to you a little bit later on uh, and they gave me a little bit of context and that context is more than five billion, yes not million, billion, more than five billion people in developing countries need access to medical surgery. Now in Africa that number uh, could be almost half of that. And remember, 50% of the population is still under the age of 30. Access to medical or quality medical services is still a challenge on the continent. Now, if you want to be part of this conversation, you can tweet us at CNBC Africa. You could tag me at the real Quizira. And I want to introduce our panel of experts. And thank you for making the time. Both of them are doctors, for the record. Uh, I'll start with, uh, to my left, uh, Dr. King Kayondo. Uh, he is the president of ICARD Africa. We're going to find out more about ICARD Africa a little bit later on. Thank you for making the time, sir. Thank you, please. To the doctor's left uh, is another doctor, Dr. Patrick Ndimwanzi. He's the executive secretary for the Human Resource for Health Secretariat. Thank you for making the time as well. Thank, Thank you for having us. Thank you. I think I would like to start with you. Uh, Dr. Patrick, and uh, the question is regarding health professionals and the lack of enough health professionals on the continent. We've just come out of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, how, or oh, we are still coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, why is it very important for the continent to invest in health professionals? And why was the pand pandemic a benchmark for why we need to invest uh, in health professionals? Thank you very much for, for having us and giving us the opportunity. Access to high quality care worldwide is still a major challenge and we've seen it through the COVID pandemic, but especially in developing countries. Uh, Rwanda has a vision of a healthy, well-educated, uh, highly skilled uh, labor force uh, that will be able to contribute to the knowledge-based economy that we want to build. Um, and for that, uh, it's extremely important to have the resources to train them uh, and have the resources that uh, are required. There is a lot of progress that has been made in infectious diseases, um, malaria, uh, tuberculosis, HIV AIDS. But there is an area, the surgical area, where uh, most of the developing countries are still lagging behind. And that's why it's so extremely important to develop the, the workforce. Thank you very much, Doctor. So another doctor. Uh, doctor ICARD, Africa. Um, it doesn't have more than five or six, you can correct me if I'm wrong, centers of excellence across uh, the globe. It's, it's going to domicile in Rwanda. There's a reason for that. Before you give us a reason for that, take us through what ICARD Africa is and what it's hoping to achieve uh, for the continent. Thank you, Kwizera, uh, for uh, this invitation. Yeah, I, ICAD, as uh, uh, you may uh, know, uh, ICAD is a, a world-leading uh, uh, training center uh, for uh, training and research uh, for minimally invasive surgery. Uh, ICAD, the name ICAD is an acronym uh, which stands for Institut de Recherche contre le cancer de l'appareil digestif. It's in French, yeah. French, uh, and my French it's brothers. in French. Uh, it, it was uh, created in 1994 by a uh, uh, well-known professor, uh, French uh, surgeon, uh, Professor Jacques Marisco. So he was really uh, interested in um, uh, in innovation, in um, uh, di di digitalization of uh, uh, surgery, and uh, all those things. He brought it in surgery, and. He, uh, he developed a Centre d'Excellence uh, excellence Centre for training and research uh, in minimally invasive surgery. So uh, IRCAD became a wo world leading uh, training centre and uh, the main focus of uh, IRCAD is uh, to develop, uh, to develop uh, techniques of minimal invasive surgery uh, uh, and the best practices, uh, even to develop also uh, devices, uh, surgical devices, which can help surgeon to uh, to uh, to operate on with, and uh, those through uh, research 
and uh, uh, research we, uh, uh, led by uh, uh, engineers uh, in collaboration with uh, surgeons. So uh, then after they share uh, those uh, techniques through uh, 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 training and uh, uh, worldwide. Uh, then it causes uh, uh, growth and uh, expand uh, by uh, creating other uh, centers uh, worldwide. Uh, the first expansion was in um, Taiwan, where it was in 2008. They created an Ishkad in Taiwan. Then after they created again uh, two other uh, centers in uh, Latin America, uh, in Brazil, in 2011 and 2017. Then another one was created uh, later on in Lebanon. Uh, it was in 2019. Then we expect that uh, in 2000, this year, uh, before the end of this year, we'll open the door for uh, IRCAD for trainees and tra trainers. Uh, quite, quite, quite hopeful there. And uh, before we run, I want us to walk for a minute. So I'll come back uh, to Dr. Patrick. 2016, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Rwanda set out the medical tourism agenda, uh, you know, becoming a medical hub now a medical service hub at that. Uh, why, why is that uh, target very important, that goal, uh, not only for Rwanda, but for the continent as a whole? Going by things like how much we spend on going to countries like India uh, and the likes to get these same services that are set to be provided for. So, uh, there's, yes, as you're saying, there's still um, some advanced care that's not yet available on the continent and for which people need to travel far to get the services. And mostly those are cancers, um, kidney diseases, and heart disease. But uh, from the time uh, we've been as a country, the focus on developing the workforce has always been uh, very high in the priority agenda. So from 2012 to 2018, we had a program of training uh, residents, speciality, and now we are starting program training subspeciality. Last week we've launched 30 new programs, including three new programs for surgery. And the aim is to be able to provide care locally, advanced and quality care locally, not only for the Rwandan population, but people in the region and also on, on the continent. Doctor. Just to piggyback off that, uh, the need to set up this, that means the challenge is on you to train the trainers. Um, why is that also important for this centre to be best here, to train the trainers? Um, actually, um, to have such a uh, facility in uh, Rwanda, uh, I think it, uh, it was strategic, it, uh, it's a strate strategic position. Uh, if we can see even the geographic situation, uh, localization of Rwanda, it's uh, almost in the center of Africa. Uh, people, instead of to travel to look for, uh, to seek for training outside uh, the continent, they will just cross uh, the neighbor country to, to, uh, to have such kind of uh, uh, transfer of technology, transfer of uh, uh, knowledge uh, in just in the, uh, the, the door, uh, 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 just across. Uh, again, it's uh, Rwanda, uh, as you know very well, that uh, uh, we have uh, really a good traffic, uh, air traffic, which is uh, uh, fluid. Uh, people can access easily in uh, uh, to, uh, then also we have uh, uh, really uh, uh, immigration uh, friendly, uh, friendly immigration process where People can have uh, e-visa uh, easily. Even hotels are really attractive and so on. So uh, if uh, such hub, uh, uh, such hub will develop absolutely a huge, will have a huge impact on, on the uh, healthcare, the quality of healthcare in, uh, in the region and even beyond. And uh, people sh will not travel to uh, to, uh, to look for uh, 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 medical uh, uh, treatment outside the, the continent. People will come just uh, uh, in to, to have uh, uh, the, the high quality care in, uh, in, um, in such places. 
uh, another thing is uh, this will create also uh, there is what we we can say it's a, a multiply effect uh, which can uh, get other opportunities, not only in medical, but in tourism, in uh, other, other opportunities in, in, um, in uh, health, as uh, one of the uh, uh, philosophers said uh, sometimes back that uh, uh, the first wealth is health. So I think uh, we, with such kind of uh, uh, teaching, high-end teaching uh, uh, and uh, uh, training center, it will create a high quality care within the region. Health is wealth. Uh, actually, it was a Roman Empire, Severus. Severus was, was the first uh, yeah, to, to coin that. I want to come back to you, um, uh, Dr. Patrick. And today's conversation, we are likely talking about surgical um, care. Paint a picture for us, uh, for the continent, where we stand when it comes to surgical care. Uh, not only in Rwanda, but you know, East Africa, Africa as a whole. Thank you. I'll start globally. Globally, there's a, a report from the Lancet Commission on Global Surgery that was issued in 2015 that stated that 5 billion out of the 7.3 billion in that time do not have access to safe and affordable surgical and anesthesia care. So that, that's, a, that's that a lot. That's three quarters of the world population. Exactly. And, and the most difficult access is in developing countries, where we have um, millions of procedures that are needed that cannot be delivered uh, and to save lives, but also to prevent disabilities. Uh, the, the estimation of that report says that close to 90% of people in developing countries do not have access to that safe and affordable surgery. So that's, that's really the, the, the picture and the way things are. Uh, and the major gap is the workforce. We don't have enough people and we don't have enough trained people. Uh, in our country, we realize that to be able to reach the 5,000 per 1,000 population procedures that are needed uh, on a yearly basis, we need to multiply the number of procedures sixfold. We started that journey, so we are producing more and more surgeons. We have developed what we call the National Strategy for Health Professional Development uh, from 2020 to 2030 that will produce, uh, that will double the number of surgeons that we have. Uh, and with the subspeciality programs that we are starting, we'll be able to have uh, the professionals who will train the others. But just to make a quick link between the medical hub and the minimally invasive surgery that we're talking about today, uh, the minimally invasive surgery technique has this advantage that you can operate on somebody and the person is discharged, is discharged the next day. So the advantages of this type of procedures, patients have less pain, they recover faster, uh, they, stay, they stay in hospital is shorter, there's less complications, uh, and, and if you want uh, to attract people, that's what people are looking for. Time consuming, uh, time is of the essence. He has painted a picture, um, not very rosy at the beginning, but we're taking steps, right? So what should be done to ensure that uh, we not only have more surgeons, but we catch up with the rest of the world, or the more developed world, when it comes to the number of surgeons vis-a-vis -vis the patients. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think with uh, this kind of uh, training, uh, it's high standard uh, 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 trainings uh, uh, in time of quality. Uh, this will absolutely increase the number of uh, well-skilled uh, surgeons uh, in the region, and this absolutely will will, will uh, uh, level up uh, the the uh, the the level of uh, uh, skilled uh, 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 medical uh, medical uh, personnel. Uh, I think, and it's not just uh, this uh, this. Uh, uh, um, 
um, institute, institute which, which which is getting in the the the, the large um, African uh, let's say uh, there is other institution institute which are coming in we have I think a cardiac center which is uh, also in the, the same place uh, there is there is many uh, 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 other uh, uh, program which are, are going on and I think with uh, a short time we, we will have uh, a, a, a level where we can uh, access, uh, people can access, uh, access uh, high quality healthcare in the, in the region. I, I want to stay with you there, Doctor, a, a, a bit. Um, with the coming in of this center uh, of excellency, uh, how will it serve? Because it's, it's there to serve the, the, the region, it's there to serve Africa. So I want to know the how. How will it be able to serve the continent? How will it be able to serve uh, Africa? Yep, uh, you understand that uh, ICAD was, uh, how ICAD uh, expanded? Uh, begin by uh, Europe, uh, Europe uh, European, uh, European, then Asia, then uh, uh, Latin America, then it, it's uh, time for Africa. So uh, people, we, we are in um, uh, discussion and uh, even we have partnership with uh, uh, universities where people are tra trained to bring uh, uh, surgeons to be trained in in uh, in uh, uh, IRCAD. Even we have uh, uh, good partnership with other uh, 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 scientific societies uh, all around the, the continent. Uh, in like uh, Kusexa as uh, works in uh, West Africa and so on. I think all those things we will create a kind of a, um, a network where people may be trained and uh, we can level up uh, those uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, gap we had uh, in, uh, in the past. Thank you, Dr. Doctor told us uh, how. What are the advantages uh, of uh, Dr. Patrick of having such a sense of excellence uh, to the people of Rwanda? Oh, this is, this is excellent. So meaning that the surgeons that we will train from their early age, the first years, they'll have access to that facility. This is a world-class center. IRCAD, as we said, is only in five countries. So it will attract a lot of teachers and faculty here in Rwanda to be able to deliver some of these classes. It will put us in contact with those world-class surgeons uh, who will be operating. But it's also, the other side of IRCAD, it's the technological aspect. So IRCAD is not only a center of excellence for training surgeon, it's also a center of excellence for the research component. Uh, and we'll be able to fill in the gaps in knowledge, but in technology that facilitates those surgeries to happen. Quick example is the imaging component. Before surgeons do a procedure, they need to see what's the organ that's sick, that's healed. So through uh, the, that IRCAD, there's a lot of studies that are being done to be able to improve the type of imaging, uh, images that the surgeon receive. And that involves uh, IT, artificial intelligence, uh, and computer skills. So it's not just the medical aspect, it's also the technological aspect that we're looking at here. And right there, you bring me to my next question, because you're talking about the numbers. Uh, it's, there's a cost to this. What is uh, that? costs uh, of having such a center of excellence in a country like Rwanda? Any of you doctors? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the cost is in millions, uh, in millions of dollars. But then uh, you need also to look at the advantages, and it's, it's good that you've mentioned the advantages before. So the investments, there's a primary investment for the infrastructure, for the equipment, and for the running of the facility. It's in, in terms of millions of dollars. But when you estimate, and there are studies that are being conducted, what's the advantages of developing uh, open procedures versus laparoscopic, the minimally invasive, it's very clear that there is a net advantage in going into laparoscopic surgery. Talking about advantages, uh, Dr. King, um, competitive advantage of why you decided 
as part of I, as ICAD uh, to say, and okay, let's go to East Africa. One, that's where we'll set it up. Two, let's narrow down to Rwanda. That's where we'll set it up. What was the competitive advantage? Um, advantage, there is many. There is many. But uh, uh, if I can uh, go back a bit, uh, there is also a political will, a strong political will uh, from uh, uh, our leadership who find that uh, it's uh, absolutely necessary to bring those kind of uh, 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 innovative uh, techniques uh, to be here in, uh, in our country. Uh, and they, as, as you said, that the, the, uh, Dr. Patrick said, uh, there is a cost behind. Uh, but what uh, it was, what is expected from it's uh, it's a it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot. Uh, not not uh, just for health, uh, the health, but uh, there is also uh, those uh, uh, other opportunities which will be uh, coming coming com coming there. Uh, the other uh, advantage is, uh, for sure, uh, have Irkad Africa here. Uh, it's uh, as Dr. Patrick said. It's uh, not just uh, for training surgeons and, and so on, but there is also uh, we have a, a research and development uh, strong team behind where engineers in uh, artificial intelligence and uh, uh, to, they are creating things devices which can tomorrow be uh, uh, sold worldwide. Who knows? Huh? Because uh, we with uh, a software or a device as uh, in um, uh, in imaging, yeah, absolutely, we will have uh, such kind of uh, uh, the industry which will be created uh, f through uh, uh, Irkad Africa. So I think well, there is many things which may come from, and uh, uh, we we expect that uh, it will it will work very well. Way forward, uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time, but I'll give both of you two minutes uh, on it to just describe. And uh, I will start with you, Doctor. Uh, you know, when you're, you're set to open your doors, uh, when we could put a timeline to that, and why we should look forward uh, to that day when it eventually happens. Yep, uh, I think uh, the uh, expected time to open the door it's uh, before the end of this year. So we I'll hold you to account. Yep. By the way, I'll be I'll be back to ask <laughs> those questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we think that uh, uh, we will have uh, many people who will come for training. Uh, we have uh, many surgeons from Rwanda, from the region, even from uh, uh, the outside uh, the the continent who will come to to be trained here. And we think that uh, per year we may train. Uh, almost uh, will begin by a number maybe uh, 500, 600, then we will have a, a rate of uh, around 100, uh, uh, 1000 uh, trainee per, per, per year. And uh, uh, we have also, uh, it can have a strong team behind of uh, expert uh, surgeons, uh, we have uh, Africans, uh, European, Americans who will come and uh, teach, give the, their skills, uh, exchange with uh, others, and to find the best practice. What are the challenges when you are operating on? Uh, so, which equipment can help you? Uh, w which techniques and so on? I think it's a, it, it's a huge platform where people will get uh, the, the best in. Uh, minimally invasive surgery techniques. I think this is a, it's a, it's our expectation, and it should change completely the the figure wh which is uh, today uh, in, uh, in in our country, even in uh, the Africa. It's less than six months to the end of the year, so you're on the clock, Doctor. Way forward and uh, expectations from this. Well, thank you. So we are expecting that there will be lots of African brothers and sisters who will come here because there's nothing better than having people coming from different places to be at the same place, to exchange knowledge and to learn from each other. So we are very much looking forward to receiving them and to, to co collaborate with them, not only for that education part, but also to advance the care that we provide to our people. Thank you very much, doctors.
That was Dr. Patrick Ndimobanzi, Executive Secretary, Human Resource for Health Secretariat. He was also joined by Dr. King Kayondo, the President of ICAD Africa. Now, if you want to be part of this conversation, have any remarks, you can tweet us at CNBC Africa. Uh, my name is Arnold Quizera. You can tweet me at The Real Quizera. Have a great rest of your day.